developed the budget. Hi, I'm Wendy Brookman from Nacho, coming live from Parliament House to discuss the budget that's just been released. And I've got M Michael Moore, the CEO from the Public Health Association of Australia with me, who's going to share the views on the budget that's just been released. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. It was a busy night. We're looking at the budget yeah. and we look particularly at health, of mm -hmm. uh, course, but we look at it in its broadest context. I haven't had time yet to discuss it with our Vice President, yeah. Carmen Parter, who has responsibility for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, health. Uh, but let me say that the, uh, I think there are some positive elements, yeah. uh, but there's so much more that could have been done. Yeah. And it is good to see the focus on some more money going to close the gap. Uh, and I think that, that we do have to remain focused uh, on the issue, um, but, I, but I just think the, that we didn't quite hit the mark. Okay. Um, is there areas in which you can uh, explain that you think that, yeah. that we could have actually, um, I guess, got a little bit more within this budget? Let me let me just start on the some positives first because uh, absolutely and, and certainly I actually had a meeting with Ken White today yeah. so it would be terrible if I didn't actually acknowledge some of those positives absolutely uh, and look the uh, uh, care and the injection of money mm. into uh, aged care for uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people I think is a really important one yeah. uh, suicide prevention mm -hmm. uh, which is actually both Indigenous and non-Indigenous and yeah. I think the overlap there is uh, obvious uh, but uh, I think there is a great weakness around the broad issues and yeah. the impact they have on Aboriginal health in particular. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk about closing the gap, when we talk about uh, social determinants and vulnerability, yeah. that ought, needs to be recognised in the broader decision-making. Yeah. So when we give this huge uh, tax break to corporate Australia mm -hmm. and then we have a little pretend that we're actually going to look after middle-income and low-income people yeah. and we'll give them a little drop compared to the huge bucket that uh, corporate Australia got yeah. and, uh, and sort of cover up what we're really doing, looking after our mates. Yeah. And I think that, uh, um, that anybody in the lower income bracket uh, uh, misses out there. And mm. I think that, of course, that uh, Indigenous people are unfairly represented statistically. We know all those things. Um, and so uh, I think we had the opportunity to be looking at incarceration. We had the opportunity yeah. uh, to be looking at uh, relationship to land and building relationships with each and every Aboriginal community around Australia, and I just don't see that coming yeah. through the budget. Yeah, um, I would I would have to agree. I've I have seen the budget, um, and you did mention the the suicide and, and mental health. Obviously, uh, suicide is one of the yeah. biggest killers in our men. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely something, um, if we look at the fact that there's a suicide and it's with those connections, um, and you know the connection, the cultural awareness, connection to land then it rolls onto our suicide yes. and it all links into things like you've said before with the incarceration yeah. and things like that, um, which probably wasn't represented yeah. um, as strong yeah. as what yeah. it could have been. Um, we have had um, before us uh, Dr um, Gannon who did yeah. speak about the aged care, which, yes. is, which is great and it's yeah. um, fantastic to have that because the uh, Aboriginal um, living to be able to use the aged care is, is something Indeed. that is, Indeed. which is yes. something that is um, positive and something yeah. that, um, you know, which we're striving for, we've been pushing forward with closing the gap. Um, what's your thoughts on closing the gap? Um, I noticed on the budget that it wasn't um, mentioned yeah. um, a lot. Um, yeah. Do you feel that that's I, something? I, I, did, I did see a minor mention yeah. of it, but that's how it struck me. Mm. And yet I think it's so fundamental to what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Uh, and look, I, I don't think it's Ken Wyatt. You know, we have a really fabulous minister uh, there, as far as I'm concerned, it wouldn't matter which party he was in. Mm -hmm. uh, he really is a incredibly competent uh, uh, operator, but mm. the budget's not put together by him. And he has an influence, and but only to a certain extent, and, uh, and they'll only give so much. And he has a responsibility for aged care, which he's obviously uh, worked on. Uh, but I think that there is just so much more that uh, yeah. could have been done. And maybe that's every budget that we say, yeah. well, much more could be done. Um, but we, but I was identifying really specific areas. Yeah. And I think that, uh, that uh, community organisations like Nacho can also mm. uh, uh, identify those areas. There is injection of funds into ACHOs. 
uh, all around the all around Australia. And I think uh, the fact that uh, we're seeing more and more reliance on community controlled uh, Aboriginal health organisations mm. is a really important step. So, uh, and and I should have recognised that really first up. I think. Yeah. Um, so um, there will be. Uh, Aboriginal people who choose to use a broader health system mm -hmm. and we have to make sure that uh, there's cultural understanding and education and uh, brought in to those areas and I hope that the new medical schools that uh, are mentioned will also build into them mm -hmm. uh, because they're rural medical schools, uh, cultural understanding, cultural respect uh, and, uh, and those fundamental things that uh, are so critical to Aboriginal health. Well, that's exactly right, and that's that's obviously what we want to do is make sure that we can um, continue having those remote communities, have yep. those medical services, um, without feeling the need to to leave or, or, or not get treatment. Yeah. yeah, and not only in remote yeah. communities. You know, here in Canberra, yeah. we have Wanunga Nimijar, and uh, yes. they do an absolutely fabulous uh, a job, and and uh, so much so that people who are not Aboriginal will also go there and yes. uh, and uh, use their services because they recognise the right. holistic manner in which they yeah. uh, which they work and that's repeated again and again Absolutely. Uh, throughout uh, throughout Australia whether remote or, or here and we certainly uh, work uh, closely uh, in Alice Springs uh, mm -hmm. with uh, John Archie and, and her mob up there and I, and I think that uh, they need to be recognised and I just hope this injection of funds helps them uh, achieve some of the things they're setting out to do with their local communities. That's right, and we are very lucky. We are lucky that we've got people um, that are in the positions that they are, um, working within our archos and, and, and pushing forward and making sure that um, you know the health stays in stays yeah. in our hands. Yeah. I mentioned Donna Chi, and then I talked about Wenunga, so I should have mentioned Julie Tong, shouldn't Julie, I? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Julie, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. she and does look, an amazing job. Are, there, there are so many fabulous people yes. uh, in Australia doing this work, and looks right. that support is uh, really important and you know credit to Ken mm -hmm. White for the Minister for this and for the budget in yeah. this in this area. Wonderful thank you so much Michael for your time um, I know it's been a long a long day and a long <laughs> night um, and we really appreciate um, your thoughts and your comments um, as well as your support. And with since I've got you here can I just throw in something else because I happen to be President of the World Federation of Public Health Association sure. I'm so excited yes. because we've got an Indigenous working group has been established and they're going to be launched in a couple of weeks in Geneva and I'll be there and uh, and a couple of Australian uh, Aboriginal women and some New Zealanders are the ones that are got it underway and started and that's here in Australia come and partner and some of my Finlay and wow. congratulations to them and, wow. and how exciting is that? That is fantastic and that's what we want. What great leadership. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. like well, we've got the younger generation, they're going to grow up and this is what we've got to do. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that's us at Parliament House wrapping up this budget.